Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a comparison between all the drawing apps you can use on the iPad Pro. Which one I preferred for my drawing style and I stuck with, and which one I dropped out of, and why. I'll give you all my reasons and compare them between each other so you can get a better understanding of how they work and what which one might be good for you. Let's get started. So first is Procreate. I think it's the most well-known app by now with the amount of marketing it gets and it deserves it, I think. What I really like about this app is how smooth it is. The app feels just so responsive. It There is no latency, whatever. It feels like there is never anything that gets in the way between you and your creative process. Like from the moment you create a document, there is no loading window, there is no saving window, it's just fluid. Whatever you do, it's all automatic. And that, I really love it. It feels like opening a digital sketchbook. Um, what I really like also is with the new Procreate 5 updates, the new brush engine. Before, I was a little bit... I don't know how to say it frustrated, I think. There was always something missing in the parameters of the brush that I wanted to get that feeling I had on more robust desktop apps. But with the new brush engine and the dual brush in Procreate 5, I think this is solved and I really like it. It's a really fun app to go and sketch quickly. What I don't like about Procreate is that there is no correction layers. And because of that, you can't work in a non-destructive workflow. Whatever you do, whatever adjustment you do on your whole image is baked in and you can't go back, you can't reverse. If for whatever reason you have to have a non-destructive workflow, this is not going to work for you. You cannot go back and change specific elements in your image, for example, to suit a client's needs really quickly. You have to do it over again on a new layer and this is something I don't like, so it can, I don't know. I can't use it for really polished work. It's more sketches and speed painting, that sort of stuff. The next one would be Art Studio Pro. When you open it, it feels kind of like Procreate in the sense that the layout and the interface is quite similar, but the capabilities of the app make it feel more like some kind of Photoshop light. Firstly, because this program has adjustment layers, unlike Procreate, and this opens up a whole lot more possibilities. And also, the brush engine is a lot, a lot like Photoshop. You have um, control over opacity and flow at the same time in the same brush and there is also a mixer brush something which I think is sorely lacking in Procreate while the other one only has like the finger tool wh where you push colors around this one has a really good average blending kind of a thing in the brush and for people who have a more painterly style this is really useful so when I say this, everything would kind of feels like Procreate but a little bit better. But the thing that is really different is how smooth the app is. And don't mistake it, the app is smooth and responsive. But sometimes I had little lags and when you like uh, use techniques like cross-hatching for example. In this instance it sometimes gets a little messy when um, the pointer doesn't stick around and sometimes you have straight lines coming across. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Maybe some kind of glitch with the palm rejection. The palm rejection isn't as good as Procreate. And also, one big thing for me is the auto-saving. Um, in RStudio Pro, the auto-saving pops up a little message on your board and stops you from drawing, I don't know, just a couple seconds. But still, it's something that puts a barrier and stops you. And that's something that uh, takes me away from the creative flow. So usually I would uh, kind of use this app beside Procreate when I'm done with the first sketch and I can have all my energy in it 
then I would uh, bring it into Art Studio Pro and have a much better painting experience. With all the adjustment layers, I could work how I like to work. And also you can map shortcuts with your finger pushes, like a free finger push on the screen brings out a little wheel with multiple shortcuts. And this is something that I think is really well done to simulate uh, keyboard shortcuts. So all in all, a great app. I really recommend it, just not for the kind of sketchy thing uh, where Procreate is a better app, but more polished stuff, I think. Then comes Paintstorm. And oh boy, this one is gonna be quick. I loved the app. Drawing in it was a joy. The brushes felt so good, just like Pentool Sai, if you know on desktop what it is. I don't really know how to explain it, but everything feels like it should feel. Whether it be for line art or painting or whatever you want, I don't know, the experience was a joy. One also huge thing about the app was how the interface was customizable. You can just um, click and drag whatever panel you wanted, resize it, put it where you want. That way you could draw with one hand and have the other one just in position on the right or left side of the, the iPad and click whatever settings you had to click at that moment. Very, very cool. But sadly, all this pleasant experience ended right when you have to save the files. It was such a huge pain. The saving process doesn't work with the native files app on the iPad. It's so convoluted and sometimes I don't know why something I thought was saved wasn't saved. So when you come back later, you have, the piece you worked on isn't here, it's really great. And sometimes, I don't know what happened, you think you start a new piece, but you actually opened a previous one, you save back and erase it, I don't know, just no. I couldn't work with it and that had to go. It Really too bad. Next, we have Midibing Paint. This one was a free app, first of all, which is really cool, and a little more geared toward um, comic creation. Medibing has um, distinctive tools for cr comic creation, like panels, uh, bubbles, uh, flashes, all that sort of stuff, all the effects, and this is really nice. The tools it has also feel good. The lines are clean, you have different layer modes. Overall, it's pretty good. Something which can also be nice is that this app also has a desktop variant, and you can sync your files and... Um, Pursue them on whatever platform you want. This can be nice. I didn't use it though. But like the one before, I didn't really like how the files are created and saved and how you navigate between them. It felt a little convoluted and sometimes I had errors, crashes and uh, corrupted files. That's a big no for me since I create my comic professionally and publish it. I needed a more robust app and a lot more professional features, which brought me back to Clip Studio. Clip Studio is the program that is really the most used by professional comic artists and mangakas, and for good reason. It simply is the best. You have all the tools you could really want for any digital creation and publication of a book, and the capabilities of the software are huge. It has every drawing tool every other program has, no exception, and more. You have a lot more customization than most of them. You have a huge library of resource with all the people publishing their assets. There's also dedicated smart tools for panel creation, speech bubble creation, text implementation. Like you can create a text and automatically it links to a speech bubble inside. It groups layer between them. Creating panels automatically creates also layer masks to mask whatever is not in the panel. I mean, it's just so easy once you get used to the workflow. It's also the program used to create animation. There is so much more in it than Procreate Animation, which is why I didn't even mention it. You have 
multiple layers on each frame, onion skinning, well, whatever you want. And the best of all is that this program is on desktop and on iPad. And that the iPad version is a full port of the desktop version. You have every feature, nothing is missing, and the interface is, um, is redesigned, but still really similar. So you do not lose yourself if you come from desktop, which is my, is my case and which is also why I love this app so much. The only reason why I didn't want to get it earlier is because it's a subscription model and uh, while the desktop app is a pay once and you get it. And I don't know, I really don't like subscription models. It reminds me of Adobe and I hate that. But in the end, I tried it. It's uh, $20 for a year. And I don't know, it's just better for comic creation than everything else. And I need it to work really fast and efficiently. That's all there is to it. The level of detail and thinking is really great. For example, every time you finish a selection, an option bar pops out at the bottom of it, so you don't really have to move your cursor, and you have every option you want from duplicate, copy, deselect, fill, whatever you want. This is the kind of details you have for almost every tool, and that makes the workflow so quick once you get used to it, and I really, really recommend trying it if you want to go into comic creation. But the program remains just as strong for digital painting. I mean, it has all the layers you want, all the modes, half tones, whatever. You can go so much further with this program than with the rest. It's really worth a try and it's free for, I don't know, it has a free period. The next app is Infinite Painter and I didn't have a lot of time with it. I tried the free trial and I was not seduced by it. I don't know, it's just, uh, it does the same thing, but it seemed pretty basic for the asking price. I don't know, maybe some people really like it, but me, I couldn't find something to really catch on. On the contrary, there is a Sketchbook Pro that for example is an app that mimics traditional media really well. And that is something I like. It does its own thing and it does it well. This app is free and also has a desktop version. And furthermore, you have a lot more um, leeway in the resolutions of the canvas you can create compared to Procreate and RStudio, for example. It's more along the lines of Clip Studio on that way. And I really like that. The brushes that come with this app are for me the big selling point of it. They feel really good just out of the box, you don't have to customize anything. They mimic traditional media really well and I can get, uh, for example, an ink feeling I can't get in any other app. And that's the reason I still use Sketchbook Pro. Ske Sketchbook Pro, oh, damn it, I can't say it. Because sometimes I just want to draw like I'm on paper and have that organic feeling back. And this is the app that gives me that feeling. On the downsides, the file system is not terrible, but not great either. It's, it doesn't hold a candle to what Procreate, Art Studio, and Clip Studio has, where you see the whole gallery of your pieces. This one, I don't know, it, it, it's not really great, but it's nowhere near a Painstorm terrible level. And lastly, we have two programs by Serif, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. I'm not going to go into too much details about Photo, because it's kind of the replacement for Photoshop, and it is, it has pretty much all the same functions. But as far as painting and drawing goes, it's really not fluid. When you want to do quick and energetic brush flow, um, for example, cross-hatching, sketching, gesture drawing. The app kind of lags and sometimes, I don't know, or maybe the palm rejection is not working so well. And this results in an overall mediocre experience, in my opinion. 
But on the other hand, the app is really complete with all the correction and adjustment layers. So you could transfer over a PSD file from Procreate or RStudio and finish it here to give it that uh, next level of polish. This could be a, wor a good workflow. Also, the canvas size is really huge compared to Procreate. This is a plus. What is weird is that Affinity Designer doesn't have all this lag. This app also has um, two workspaces called Personas, the Pixel Persona and Vector Persona. You can use all the layers you want in pixel mode and then transfer over to Vector Persona and have new vector layers. And this brings a whole nother dimension that no other app has, vector drawing. Just for the vector ability alone, this app is really really great to draw in. It's kind of like Illustrator, but on the iPad, with some functions missing and some added. You can, for example, do the line art w only with the pencil tool, and afterwards, then you can go in and choose exactly what kind of line you want for each vector. This app also has all the adjustment layers you want, for example, gradient map, that works on the vector layers. I really recommend this one, for the possibilities you get by bringing Vector onto a raster. However, these two apps from Affinity have quite a daunting interface and you will have to put some time to learn it and be familiar with it. These were all the apps I used and I keep using only some of them. I used Procreate back since the Procreate 5 version before I use a lot more RStudio but now that the dual brush function came out, I use Procreate more. For anything that is a sketch, quick drawing, gesture drawing, speed painting, all this stuff, I use Procreate. For more polished illustrations, I either bring a sketch from Procreate or RStudio into Clip Studio or Affinity Designer, depending on how I want to further improve it. Or, most of the time, I just uh, begin in a new painting in Clip Studio or Affinity Designer. When I create my webcomic, no question, I go from start to finish on Clip Studio. And when I do graphic design and creating some logos and stuff, or text, I go in Affinity D Designer just for the vector capabilities. That is all for me. I hope you can find it helpful. And bye everyone, keep creating.